everybody make it as loud as you can for Ronan Hirschberg! Oh my God. Thank you, thank you. This is fucking, fucking amazing. We're fucking packed out like the good old days. This is awesome. I mean, it's a bad time for me to have COVID, but other than that... <laughs> I did actually have COVID uh, a couple of weeks ago for the first time, which is fucking embarrassing, <laughs> getting it this late. <laughs> it's embar It's like finally watching Sopranos and wanting to talk about it. <laughs> like, Can you believe Adriana got shot? It's like, <laughs> we did this two decades ago. Um, <laughs> and it's still scary, by the way. It's still scary, because for most people, it's like a cold or a mild flu, but there's always some asshole who's like, it's been eight months. <laughs> And I still can't hear birds sing! <laughs> Lasagna now tastes like rat feces! <laughs> and rat feces taste like lasagna! <laughs> Just keep it to yourself, okay? <laughs> it was okay for me, basically for four days. I lied in bed, uh, really tired and depressed. Uh, it was a lot like not having COVID. <laughs> It was very similar to not. <laughs> I didn't really know where the COVID ended or began. <laughs> it's like when I had mono in college and my doctor told me not to engage in sexual activity for like two months and I had to pretend that'd be a big adjustment to my schedule. <laughs> the acting chops I pulled that day. <laughs> doctor, you know how many women you're disappointing right now? I gotta clear my whole calendar. <laughs> But I'm glad we're done with the pandemic and we've moved on to nuclear war because... <laughs> because it was tough. It's been a tough couple of years. It's been really hard. You never know who's taking precautions. Like, I was at this girl's apartment a couple months ago, right, in West Virginia. We were about to have sex, not to brag. We were about to have sex. <laughs> when she said she wasn't fucking vaccinated. She said I was in the apartment. So I stormed out of there the next morning so quickly. <laughs> I wasn't having it. Right at 11 a.m. We fucked one more time and then I was out of there. I was out. It is amazing how quickly your dick will just change your values in a heartbeat. Like this whole year I've had so much anger towards anti-vax people and then the minute one of them wants to fuck me, I'm like, well, maybe it is a hoax. I mean, look, who, who really knows? No, this is a tough pandemic. It was, but I'm trying to be positive. I'm a negative guy. I will say this. This is the first pandemic in the history of pandemics that some people admitted enjoying. And that's progress. <laughs> like, no one in the 1500s was like, you know, the robotic plague really gave me a chance to just slow down <laughs> and just live in the moment. <laughs> Things were going way too fast. I could never just catch a breath. And then thank God the Black Death came along and I got to finally work on myself. I got to learn about me. <laughs> if not for Ebola, I would have never learned ukulele. So this was a blessing in disguise. <laughs> With... <laughs> now it's been a hard pandemic. It has been hard. It's been hard for me for two main reasons. Number one, I'm a huge hypochondriac. And the worst part about being a hypochondriac during this pandemic is here's this disease where one of the symptoms is not having symptoms. <laughs> Do you understand what that does to a hypochondriac? Do you understand the level of mind fuck? Every day last year, I was like, hey, I feel pretty good. What if it's COVID? <laughs> oh my God. I feel amazing. Am I about to die? There are no rules anymore. It didn't help that the media made you try to go insane at all times. Seriously, the media fucking suck. CNN and Fox News can both suck my dick, honestly. They both suck. They both suck. For, diff for different reasons. Fox News, it's always the same crazy shit. It's always some like hot blonde woman you kind of want to hate fuck. And uh, maybe I'm projecting, I don't know. 
And she's always saying something insane. She's just like, new report says vaccines may make you Jewish. <laughs> Before we get into that, here's a video of Nancy Pelosi falling down the stairs. <laughs> and they just never go back to the report. They just watch that video for like two hours. <laughs> But then you go on CNN, and CNN is always some smug news reporter standing over a woman in a hospital bed being like, we're here talking to some dumb bitch who didn't get vaccinated. <laughs> How do you feel, you fucking moron? You're an idiot! How do you feel you didn't get vaccinated and now you're dying, you stupid whore? <laughs> She's just like, no habla ingles. She said she feels like a real jackass. <laughs> Back to an even more smug news anchor. <laughs> the media doesn't give a shit about our mental health at all. I saw a segment on CNN last year where they're saying COVID numbers were rising and they were playing suspenseful music. <laughs> are you out of your mind? They were like, COVID numbers are on the rise. Da -da 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 da 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 you don't need suspenseful music when we're the ones in the horror movie. <laughs> the other problem with the pandemic is I got vaccinated early, but only because my BMI is obese. <laughs> Anyone else have that bittersweet victory? <laughs> None of you? It's not that dark. I can see you all. It's some of you. <laughs> I'm not blind. I'll start pointing you out. I don't give a shit. I'll start guessing your weight like I work at a carnival. <laughs> the BMI is bullshit. Can we agree on that? It's bullshit, yes. I mean, I know I'm chubby, but I didn't think I was, might not make it through COVID fat. I knew I'm a little big. I didn't think I was second in line after 85-year-olds and people with asthma. I didn't realize I was emergency-level fat, okay? I thought I was just George Costanza, 90s chubby, you know? But according to the BMI, I'm the first victim in the movie Seven, apparently. Yeah. According to the BMI, when doctors see me, they're like, oh shit, we gotta get you in right away. Come on! Fucking run! Well, don't run. I know you haven't run in a while, but just walk. I'm really glad you all laughed at that. I did that joke a couple weeks ago in Mississippi and it did not go well. <laughs> it turns out it is hard to do fat jokes when you're the thinnest person in the room. <laughs> it's a real disconnect. I was like, I'm so fat. They're all just in rascals. You look amazing. <laughs> Man, supermodels in New York sure are insecure. <laughs> But the shit makes me self-conscious, which sucks, because I'm trying to date, I'm on Bumble, which if you don't know Bumble, yeah, look me up on there. Um, if you don't know Bumble, Bumble's the app where the woman has to message you first. You can't message the woman. And I gotta say, it's not working whatsoever. <laughs> I'm not getting any... <laughs> I get the point of it is prevent women from getting creepy messages, which is awesome. But it's also preventing me from getting any messages. <laughs> which is not fair. Because I can't get laid on my picture alone, all right? I don't have I want to fuck you from afar vibe. I don't. I look like an Israeli John Belushi. I look like if Zelensky let himself go. He better not lose the war because he's going to look like this three weeks later. I mean, I get laid. I don't want you to think I don't get laid. I get laid, but it's a lot of work. I have to put a lot of effort in. I have to tell a bunch of jokes, a couple lies. It's a whole production. <laughs> I'm not ugly, but I'm at the level of attractiveness where if I play hard to get, I will not be God. <laughs> I play hard to get, every single woman's like, no, we don't accept the challenge. <laughs> Duel not accepted. <laughs> I don't even know if we'd fuck you if you were easy to get, honestly. <laughs> but definitely not hard. You can't be shitty and have obstacles around you. You're like an Applebee's with crocodiles in the parking lot. <laughs> You're not worth the effort. No, I do okay. I was actually hooking up with a girl the other 11 years ago. And 
That's right, I have the sexual frequency of a cicada. I'm doing very well in my life. And we were making out, and at one point, I don't mean to be graphic, but at one point she touched my dick. Yeah. She touched my dick, and my dick, that, that's my spot. It really is. It is. When you touch me on my dick, I just, I go crazy. It is my special spot. We all have a spot, and for me, it's my penis. I'm kidding, my spot's my asshole. Every guy's spot is their asshole. That's true. The biggest homophobe spot is in their asshole. I'm not making this shit up. The male G-spot is in the prostate. Which is, yeah, fucking anal crew up front, yes. Which is proof that God has a sense of humor. Because God was basically like, all right, I'm gonna make most men homophobic. And then... This is gonna be really funny. <laughs> I'm gonna put their pleasure center right in their butt and just watch them work that shit out. They'll be like, I hate gay people, but I know it feels pretty good back there. And I feel bad for homophobes, I really do. It must suck to know that your greatest orgasm can only come from your biggest fear. That must suck. And it's not my biggest fear, which is why I got pegged earlier this year. Thank you, thank you. If this was Brooklyn, I'd be getting a standing ovation right now, but that's okay. Wouldn't even have to finish the joke. If you don't know what a peg is, a peg is either the wooden leg of a pirate. I love this, because the people laughing know what it is. And there's a couple of innocent folks in here like, and what else? And what else is it? Or when a girl fucks you with a strap-on dildo. <laughs> Some of you look so uncomfortable right now. <laughs> this guy won't even look at me. Look at me! Look in my eyes! We're doing this! Don't put your fucking head down. This bit is gonna happen whether you put your head down or not. If you all tighten up, I'm just gonna go further. Which is what she said when she pegged me. That's a true story. True story. So I got pegged. What happened is this girl I was seeing asked if I wanted to get pegged. And I was like, well, I like a finger in the ass. Maybe I'll like getting pegged. So I did it, and it turns out a finger is the perfect size. <laughs> they really nailed it on a finger. Some of you still look uncomfortable, so I'm gonna talk about this a little more. Um, can I just tell you the nice part about being pegged? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you anyway. The nice part, it's really nice to just lie there and just get fucked. That's a nice quality, to just lie there and just think about your day and all the errands you have and your to-do lists. I had no idea sex could be relaxing. I had no idea. Guys were missing out. Because for sex with guys, there's a lot of pressure. It really is. To the point where half the time, it's not even that fun. It isn't. First of all, for me not to come early, I always have to think of sad shit. So every fuck I have is bittersweet at best. She's like, you want to come home with me? I'm like, great. Now I got to think about the time my dog got run over. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks for bringing up this sad memory. Because we gotta perform well, we, got, we can't come early, we can't not get it up. Because if we don't perform well, women, you're great, you're like, it's not a big deal, it happens all the time. And then you go and tell all your fucking friends. <laughs> you have no patient doctor confidentiality. I have mostly women friends, that's all they do. They're like, you know Jared, he comes after two seconds. You know Phil, he wants you to call him mama's little boy. Shut up! <laughs> Shut your fucking mouth! Men don't talk about sex. That's a big lie in society that men are always talking about sex. Women talk about sex. This is how men talk about sex. I fucked Jill last night. How was it? Awesome. That's the whole conversation. That's it. Meanwhile, women are like, I had sex with Stan, and before you ask, here are the exact measurements of his penis how long he lasted, four sketches of his balls, and two Yelp reviews. 
Also, halfway through, he cried about a dog. It was awkward. <laughs> All right, we made it through the pegging bed. Give yourself a round of applause. I've been, uh, I've been sober now for uh, five years, and uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Even when I wasn't sober, there's some drugs I fucking hated. Like, I hate edibles. They're my least favorite drug. I hate them. Because every edible instruction is always the same, and it's always nonsense. It's always someone handing you, like, a delicious cookie and being like, only do half. Do not just start with half. Only half. Do not do more than half. Like, motherfucker, I've never had half a cookie in my life. I've either had zero cookies or all the cookies. Those are the only two cookie options. Am I wrong? There's no in-between with cookies. Either none or every one in my periphery. That's it. Can anyone here just eat half a cookie? If you are, I hope you die. Seriously. I hope you feel amazing and it turns out to be COVID and you die. <laughs> First of all, if you eat half of something, how about you don't put the marijuana in a dessert? How about that? Don't put it in a brownie, don't put it in a chocolate. I'll, I'll do half a wheat carrot. <laughs> I don't wanna brag, but I can do half a carrot, no problem. <laughs> I've never once had half a carrot and been like, get this away from me before I eat the whole thing. <laughs> A little too much. <laughs> but I had a lot of fun on drugs. I did. I once, true fun story, I once had sex with a girl named Molly while on heroin. True story. <laughs> I saw a poster recently for heroin. I mean, not for heroin, but uh, <laughs> very much against heroin. And, uh, <laughs> and the poster said, uh, I mean, I don't need to point to the wall. You know where a poster is at. <laughs> The poster said, uh, be careful, uh, your heroin might be mixed with fentanyl. Uh, you know what's also bad that's in your heroin is heroin. You really gotta watch out. I don't know if you know this, but there's a dangerous amount of heroin in heroin. <laughs> also, how fucked up is fentanyl that heroin is the healthy part of that concoction? <laughs> it sucks getting sober, because I used to have so much tolerance for drugs and alcohol, now I have none, and it's like embarrassing. I used to have so much. I used to fall asleep on cocaine. That was my level of tolerance. Now, if I see someone drinking coffee after two, I'm like, Jesus, take a look at Keith Richards over here. My God, what is that, cold brew? Slow down, Caligula, my God. Do you need an intervention right now? You're gonna be up all night. But I'm also getting older, that's a big part, you know? I'm 37, a lot of people think I'm younger because I've had so few accomplishments, but I'm 37. <laughs> I don't wanna brag, but I've been told I have the lack of achievements of a much younger man. <laughs> when I was in my 20s, I thought that no one ever changed. That was my view on life, and some of you might think that. I thought you just stayed the same, and then you died. That was my view. <laughs> and now I'm in my 30s, and I realize not only do you change, you become the exact opposite person. It is truly insane. Seriously, I used to be the biggest degenerate. Now I'm such a square. Seriously, I once had sex with a homeless woman while on Oxycontin. Now I make my own trail mix at home. People fucking change. I thought I would turn into my dad, but I skipped him, went straight to my grandpa. I, I did the most old man shit the other week. This is gonna beat anyone in here, and it's the most embarrassing thing I'm gonna tell you tonight. And I just told you I had sex with a homeless woman while on Oxycontin. This is a true story from two weeks ago. Most old man shit ever. I accidentally FaceTimed my friend while looking under the couch for my reading glasses. Is that not the oldest sentence? I was under the couch, I hear hello from my phone, I stand up, kinda hurt my back, bring the FaceTime to my ear. I bring it to my ear. My friend is just going into my ear, 
Like she's in an episode of the Magic School Bus. She's just in the curves of my ear going, hello? I'm saying hello like I'm annoyed, even though I'm the one who called, which is the most grandpa shit ever. I'm just like, hello? Who is this? Who keeps calling? Hello? And to top it all off, my reading glasses on my forehead the entire time. I'm ready to fucking die. I am so old in my soul. Last year, I said this legitimate sentence. I said, it's time for me to upload a stand-up video onto Tic Tac. <laughs> and if you don't get that joke, you're also very old. <laughs> I, I have to get on TikTok. I like TikTok. I post stand-up videos on there. You get to see what the young people are, are all about. And they're the worst. Um, <laughs> Like the ones you're here, I'm glad you're here, I'm glad you're here, but 20, people in their 20s, they suck. They fucking suck. Every stand-up video I post gets flagged for hate speech. It's insane. I'm a liberal, but to the fucking young generation, I'm Mussolini, apparently. So many times, I, you suck, you, they don't have any sense of humor. So many times I've posted stand-up videos where young people have commented, are you serious? Telling jokes into a microphone <laughs> to an audience that's laughing at a club. And they're like, are you serious? <laughs> Young people suck. Seriously, I hate them. Honestly, I'm glad climate change has robbed them of a future because <laughs> they're the worst. And I, and I know some of you are in your 20s. I know what you're thinking right now. You're going, are you serious? No! No! Can I see it? You're all blinking. I know what that means. You're flagging me for hate speech in your head. I get flagged for hate speech. You get that ticket. So the, you, this joke violated community standards. What community? You're jacking off in your mom's basement. Go fuck yourself. But also, young people, like, you don't sympathize with old people because it's hard to get old, especially in America. Once you turn 75 in America, you don't have a lot of options, and it's really sad. It really is. You can either be put into a nursing home and forgotten or run every aspect of government. Those are the only... <laughs> Seriously. All of you have to make a choice at 75. Do you want to play bingo all day long or do you want to pass legislation? <laughs> that will have no effect on your life whatsoever. <laughs> I voted for Biden, but he's 78. He's 78. <laughs> I don't think we realize just how crazy that is. 78, I've done the math. By the end of his second term, he will have been dead for seven years. <laughs> it's insane. You have to be 35 to be president. That's the problem. That's a crazy rule. 35, I'm only 37 and I barely have the will to live. <laughs> Much less run the country. <laughs> But it's always been this way, you know? George Washington, he was like 113 when he ran. <laughs> don't, don't fact check me on that. <laughs> I actually read a biography on George Washington recently. It was pretty interesting. Did you know that he could never tell a lie? <laughs> Seriously, that's true. That must, have been, that must have been hard on his wife. <laughs> She'd be like, do I look fat in this dress? And he'd be like, I fucked an underage prostitute last night. <laughs> She gave me syphilis, and now you have it. And yes, you look fat in that dress. My mom's getting up there, she's 70. I don't think she has dementia, but I think when she gets dementia, it'll be hard to tell because... Because <laughs> she's gotta lose it. Like recently, this is totally true, 100% true. Uh, everything else I've said tonight is a lie. This is 100% true. I, one of my paychecks actually got mailed to her, and I had to... Um, she had to open my banking mobile account on the phone and deposit the check, right? So I'm on the phone with her, and she's like, all right, to get into your account, there's a security question. And I'm like, what's the security question? And I swear to God, she goes, what city was your mother born in? <laughs> Are you telling me I'm adopted or that you have dementia? 
Now, isn't it terrifying to think that only 10 years she'll be ready to run for president? My mom, I know it's hard to explain my mom. My mom is just a, the biggest Jew stereotype in the world. Like every Jewish kid thinks that, but my mom, my mom is such a Jewish stereotype that if she was in a movie, just being herself, people in the audience would get offended. They would, they'd be like, I don't think we should be watching this. This seems like a really anti-Semitic portrayal of a Jew. I'm gonna flag this for hate speech right now. It violates community standards. She has no filter. She's never had a filter, and uh, which is whatever. But the, the thing is, she's fat shaming my whole life because she has no filter. She just says whatever she thinks. And I was recently on Zoom with her, and she hinted because she still does it. She hinted. It was a hint, but she hinted that I gained weight during the pandemic. It was subtle, but I caught it. It was at the very end of the conversation. Uh, I'm about to get off, and she looks at me and she goes, "So I see you've gained weight during the pandemic." <laughs> But I knew what she was implying. I knew. <laughs> I know, my mom's great, but the thing is, like, no matter how much I remind myself that, because she's 70, no matter how much I remind myself that she could die at any moment and our time together is precious and fragile, that information does not keep me from wanting to get off the phone with her as quickly as possible. <laughs> I know it, but I still, after 30 seconds, I'm done. I'm, She's reminding me to do my taxes 12 times. I'm like, Mom, I have to get off. Please don't die. I'll feel really guilty. Please li live forever so I don't have to talk to you. <laughs> she hates dirty language. She hates, like, I posted a video recently, and she called me, and she said, <laughs> she said, I don't like how in that last video you said, suck my dick. <laughs> Well, Mom, I don't like that you're saying suck my dick to me right now. That's way worse. Also, I was zoning out and just tuned into the conversation right at suck my dick. Now, this conversation's taking a really weird turn. And then, I swear to God, because she doesn't know, she doesn't, she doesn't always use the words she intends. I swear to God, she said, that kind of language really turns me off. I should hope! I hope everything I ever do turns you off! That is my main goal in life. To keep you off. I never want that switch even moving a centimeter! Stay off your whole life! Anyway, I posted that video and she did not like it either. At least her fucking pussy wasn't wet during it, you know what I mean? <laughs> all right, all right. The only one who should be uncomfortable is me. <laughs> and my mom, who's in the audience in the back. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding, she's not here. She'll never see this. She'll get an edited version. <laughs> Problem is my mom is like, I, she always speaks in cliches. I think as you get older, you just find 12 cliches. You just repeat them for the rest of your life. She said my favorite the other day. I'm talking to her and she said, I can't believe it's already April. <laughs> really? That's the thing in this last insane nightmarish couple of years you have trouble believing. That's the part that it's already April? Kanye West ran for president. That wasn't a dream. It felt like it. It wasn't. Rudolph Giuliani got brought down by Borat. A fictional character. Do you understand how crazy? That's like Austin Powers arresting Mike Pence. There was a coup on the Capitol that looked like if the French Revolution was reenacted by Carnival Cruise passengers. And out of all that, 
the thing my mom has to pinch her cheek about is that time moves forward. That's the thing. The president of Ukraine is a Jew who used to be a comedian. Because that's how badass Ukrainians are. Even their Jewish comedians will fight to the death. Yeah. Last year marked the only time ever that the Baldwin brothers weren't jealous of Alex's career. <laughs> Last month, we watched helplessly as a megalomaniacal tyrant waged an unprovoked war on a comedian. And the crazy part is, you have no idea right now if I'm talking about Putin, Kanye, or Will Smith. <laughs> And out of all that, the thing my mom has trouble comprehending is that after March, are you ready for this shit? Are you ready for this crazy turn of events? Buckle in, are you ready for this M. Night Shyamalan twist? Comes April 1st. I can't wait till aliens land. I'll be like, mom, can you believe this? And she'll be like, I know, Hanukkah already? Crazy. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, I'm a Jew. I'm a big Jew. It's weird, sure. Uh, it's weird. Uh, it's weird being a Jew in America because people will come up to you. The Jews know this. People will come up to you and they'll be like, What do you think about all this fighting in Israel? You're a Jew. What do you think about all this fighting? It's like, I don't know. I know. I got my first blowjob on birthright there when I was 18. <laughs> and that's all I know. That is the limit of my knowledge on Israeli politics and history. If I had to teach a class on Israel, I'd be fucked. I'd be like, take out your books. We're gonna learn about one very important date. <laughs> June 2nd, 2001, when I was blown by a Russian sex worker in Tel Aviv with my mother's money. <laughs> that was my Israeli Independence Day. <laughs> no, Israel's fucked up though. I will say, like, whenever I see footage in Israel of like the, the religious Jews, you know, it's like the thick coats and the black hats going death to all Arabs. And then I see the Arabs with hijabs covering their face going death to all Jews. I just want to go up to both of them and be like, why don't you stop fighting and come together on what you have in common. How about that? For example, you both are very overdressed for the desert. <laughs> I have never seen two groups of people with the worst summer wardrobe in my life. In my life. That's my entire Middle East peace plan. It's just one ward, shorts, that's the whole plan. <laughs> No, Israel is really violent. This is how violent Israel is. The most peaceful religion there is Christianity. <laughs> you know how fucked up a place has to be for the Christians to be the ones to be like, everybody calm down. Just calm down. Let's not let religious differences make us go crazy. Some of you are laughing, a couple of you are like, easy Jew. Uh, come on. Take it easy. Take it easy. I'm not religious, but I'm, I'm not an atheist. I don't know. I don't know if there's a God. People always ask, like, do you believe in God? I'm like, I don't know. I don't even know how a mortgage works. So I don't think I'm equipped to answer the bigger questions. I can't be like, there's definitely no God. And as for subprime lending, some mysteries can never be explained. <laughs> I have a lot of respect for religion. I do. I have a lot of respect for priests. I think it must be so hard to have to listen to one boring confession after another all day long. Just one boring confession after another. Like the whole time they probably just want to stand up and be like, oh really? You forgot to get flowers on your wife's birthday? 
I fucked four kids last week. <laughs> Come back when you got something good. <laughs> oh, oh, you have a bunch of unpaid parking tickets. I'm fucking a kid right now. All right, I'll do, a, I'll do a quick Holocaust joke to balance it out. <laughs> With the Holocaust, they always use the phrase, never again. That's a weird phrase. It's weird to me, at least. Never again? Why are we talking about genocide the way my mom complains when she's flying United? <laughs> How was your flight? Never again. <laughs> I will not be returning. It was horrible. What are the slogans that got rejected? Auschwitz, it wasn't for me. The Holocaust, let me speak to your manager right away. Um, speaking of atrocities, I, um, <laughs> it's a bad segue, but uh, I remember recently that I had a friend a couple years ago, uh, not a friend anymore, he's a psycho, but, uh, and you'll find out why. He was dating a girl years ago and she broke up with him and to get back at her, he wrote negative Yelp reviews at her job, I swear to God. And she worked at the time at the 9-11 Memorial Museum. I know, it was insane. So when he told me, I remember I went on the Yelp and I found it and I screenshotted it. And I was recently looking through my screenshots and I found it. And I'm gonna read it to you tonight. There's four of them, o only one is his. I'm not gonna tell you which one. All right, here's the first one. A beautiful, moving tribute. Five stars. A sacred, <laughs> spiritual journey. Five stars. <laughs> There's a real whore working the front desk. <laughs> Never forget, she's a fucking bitch. One and a half stars, so. <laughs> Flights were really weird after 9-11, and now they're super weird with the pandemic. I don't, I don't want to find it weird, and also rather inappropriate, that the minute you board a plane now, they immediately, immediately give you wipes to jerk off with in the bathroom. <laughs> uh, it's insane, there's like, here's your wipe to jack off with. <laughs> Here's your wife's son to jack off with. <laughs> I'm terrified of flying. I, I, I hate turbulence. It's my least favorite thing. Anyone, round of applause. And honestly, who's afraid of turbulence? All right, all right, hell yeah. Okay, so that's about half. And that's, that's the thing I think we're most divided on in this country. <laughs> Seriously, it's not the pandemic. It's not politics. It's not the Will Smith slap. It's that on a plane, when it's shaking, half the people on that plane are convinced they're going to die. <laughs> Just convinced. And the other half don't give a fuck. <laughs> don't give it. They don't even know it's happening. They're just sitting there watching Cupcake Wars on their phone, having no idea. The guy next to him is having a panic attack. <laughs> and for the people who aren't scared, the people who didn't clap, I get it. You're correct, you, you are correct, the people who aren't scared, but you should be scared. You should be, because you're in a chair that's shaking in the sky. It's fucking shaking in the sky. You're never in a car and it's just like fucking shaking. But somehow when it's in the fucking clouds, it's totally fine. I don't get it, I don't understand you all. And I know some of you have statistics ready. You're like, well, actually, you have a greater chance of being fucked by a humpback whale. Than... <laughs> you 
know, you have greater odds of a koala bear punching you in the pussy on a Tuesday than a commercial flight being taken down by turbulence. But it's scary, and you don't care, and it trivializes the rest of our plights. I was in a chair, fucking fly here the other day, the chair is shaking. I'm fucking praying to God. My life is flashing before my eyes. I'm like, gonna, I'm gonna die. I'm just thinking about my long bucket list. The only, it's just peggings crossed off, everything else. <laughs> I'm freaking out, I'm sweating. I literally think I'm about to fucking die. And the guy next to me is asleep. <laughs> He's asleep. You can't get more different than that. And it's a deep sleep, too. I know, because I've been holding his hand, and it hasn't woken up. I'm like, can you wake up so I don't have to feel like a fucking pussy right now? Do you understand how upsetting it is that the same turbulence that has caused me to have an existential spiral has rocked this motherfucker to sleep? Like a baby? Like a newborn? That's how divided we are. We're never gonna come together on the fucking vaccine. My nightmare is his lullaby right now. <laughs> I've had a lot of anxiety. I've had it my whole life, ever since I was eight. Um, I, I still perform, I still do everything. It hasn't really stopped me from doing anything besides be happy. Uh, that's the only... <laughs> That's the only thing. I can do everything. I just don't really enjoy it that much. Um, it's hard. Like, I'm a hypochondriac. I've talked about it before. I'm a hypochondriac. And I, I have a twin sister, and she's also a hypochondriac. But she's, like, a little arrogant about it. She really is. Like, recently she saw a couple moles on my back, and this is how cocky she is. She said, hey, Rana, not to alarm you, but a couple of those moles look suspicious, but you should probably get a second opinion. I was like, no offense, but I do not consider what you just said a first opinion. Who the hell do you think you are? That's a suggestion at best. Do you understand how shitty it'd be if I went to my doctor and I was like, doctor, I was just with my twin sister and now I'm here for a second opinion. And after you, if you have a different opinion, don't worry. My mailman said he'd break the tie. Why are you crying, doctor? Anyway, she was a little insulted because she's a dermatologist, but I still <laughs> feel so ugly that just being kind of silly. I, uh, yeah, I have a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression. I would never kill myself though, um, mainly because I have a student therapist and I don't want to fuck up her GPA. That's the main. <laughs> I do have a student therapist. Who's, who's in therapy in here? It's New York, it's probably a lot of you. Yeah, yeah. If you're thinking about going, do not, let me just give you some advice. My therapist is 26 and she's really hot. And it was a huge mistake. Do not get a young, hot therapist. Turns out, you will not be honest to them. I won't, I will lie to impress her, which is not good. It's also insane. I will lie, because in my head, I think if she thinks I'm cooler, she'll want to fuck me. Which is crazy. Honestly, that's what I should be talking about in therapy. But I don't. I just lie all day long. The other week, she asked how my uh, obsessive compulsive disorder is going, and I was like, terrible. Last week, I made a woman come, and then I had to do it 10 more times. I'm a mess! <laughs> and don't get me started on my hypochondria. Did you know having a large cock can lead to health problems? <laughs> she, has a, she has a parrot in her room, in her office, which is crazy. Is that not weird? A parrot? Out of all the animals you're gonna pick as a pet, you're gonna go with the only one. <laughs> the only one that can break doctor-patient confidentiality. <laughs> That's the only one. Now, now every day I'm legitimately worried that there's a parrot in a cage right now just being like, bah, bah, I had another dream, I fucked my aunt. Bah. <laughs> bah, bah. Now that I've been pegged, it's the only way I can come. Bah.
Those are just examples, by the way. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm fascinated by uh, birds. I am. I mean, I'm not, but... Um, I, I, I lied about that. But I am interested in pigeons, because pigeons used to deliver the mail. Do you all know that? They were called carrier pigeons. Every pigeon you see now is just an out-of-work postal employee. <laughs> they used to deliver the mail, and a lot of times they would deliver it to the wrong address. And I read why, it's really interesting. It's because they were pigeons. <laughs> How did they ever deliver it to the right address? Ever, even once. Even once, how did they get it? I would give anything to overhear a conversation about lost mail back then. This is like some guy, hey Jerry, never got the invitation to your wedding. Well, that's weird, because I gave it to a bird. I gave it to a bird, and then, I, and then I told him your address in his ear. I spoke human English into a bird's ear. I was like 1425 Allen Mead Road, expedited shipping. And then I threw him off the ledge. So I don't know how it didn't get there. I have, a, I have a therapist, I have a psychiatrist, and they're very different. Therapist is like an hour, you talk about your feelings. And, and, and your emotions. Psychiatrist is like a minute tops. They're just like, here, maybe this pill will help you shut the fuck up. <laughs> they put me on, uh, he put me on Prozac. Anyone else on Prozac in here? Oh yeah, all right, cool. How much are you on? Way more than me. Way more than me? <laughs> I'm on 40, more than that? Okay. That's, I mean, all right, just be coy about it. I don't know. <laughs> If I guess right, will you tell me? 60? Okay, fuck you. That's a lot, man. I know. I can't believe you just admitted that on a special table. It's really embarrassing. It's a ridiculous amount of Prozac. <laughs> and I'll be there shortly. Um, I'm on 40, and before I got on, uh, I, read, uh, I read the drug reviews to decide whether I wanted to get on, and I read one drug review that's amazing, and I'm gonna read it to you word for word. <laughs> I fucking love this, it's by Scott. <laughs> and he said, this is word for word. After taking Prozac, I start to feel no emotion whatsoever. <laughs> My wife and I would argue, and she would call me a walking zombie. I didn't want to have sexual relations with her, and that took a serious toll on our marriage. Other than that, the medication worked great. <laughs> I started taking Prozac right after reading that. Because that's how you know it's a good drug. You know it's a good drug when it ruins someone's life and they're still like four stars. Because that's purely the drug. That's nothing externally making them happy. That should be every commercial for antidepressants. It should just be someone being like, I lost my family, I lost my job, I'm doing pretty good. <laughs> but yeah, so I have a lot of anxiety. Everyone has anxiety these days. A lot of guys have a lot of anxiety about the Me Too movement. I, I support the Me Too movement, because I do, because before the Me Too movement, we weren't doing shit. Seriously, before the Me Too movement, our big solution to women being attacked was just giving them whistles. <laughs> that was the whole strategy. You know how insulting that is? Women were like, help, we're being attacked. Men were like, not a problem. Let's see what we have in this referee's locker over here. We got some black shoes, you need those, no? We got a stopwatch, no? Hey, I know, we got, we got a whistle. You can use a whistle. She's like, this is serious. Hey, I know it's serious. That's why when it happens, you have to make the same sound used to prevent other serious crimes. Like double dribbling. But sometimes, like cancel culture can go a little too far, sometimes. For example, I'm a little afraid of saying that out loud right now. <laughs> and for the young people, that's just a joke. 
can never go too far. It's always very reasonable. No, I love woke culture. Woke culture is like the Hunger Games, where only the most annoying person survives at the end. But it can't go too far. Like a couple years ago, they tried to cancel Jimmy Fallon because they found a sketch of him in blackface as Chris Rock from like uh, 15 years ago on SNL. And they demanded he get fired and he had to apologize. And I was recently on YouTube and I saw an interview with Chris Rock where he was forgiving Jimmy Fallon. And what he said was really beautiful. And I just want to read it to you because I think it's really nice. He said, well, obviously blackface is really hurtful. The fact that no one was up in arms 15 years ago when the sketch came out is proof that morality and society evolve. They don't always stay in the same fixed place. And instead of attacking one person, when we've all grown, instead, let's do our best to create a more tolerant and forgiving society moving forward. And I thought that was really beautiful, you know? Though it turned out, the video of Chris Rock was actually just Jimmy Fallon again. <laughs> He's really good. He's such a good impressionist. I've talked about a lot of morons tonight. I want to talk, I want to talk uh, at the end of the set, I want to talk about my favorite moron, which is my favorite moron is whenever it gets really cold, there's always some moron who's like, global warming's real. Why is it so fucking cold right now? You know these idiots? If global warming's real, why is it so fucking cold? It's like, dude, I actually have no idea. <laughs> I don't know anything about global warming, which is very unfortunate, because I will lose arguments to climate change deniers. I will, because while they have all the wrong information, it turns out wrong information beats zero information. <laughs> It totally does. I'll give you an example. I was in an Uber once, and at one point the Uber driver was talking to me about transgender people in the military. It was a really fun ride. <laughs> and at one point he said, I would never want to be in a foxhole with a transgender person. And usually I'm annoyed by this shit and I ignore it, but I was too annoyed this time, so I just said to him, I said, dude, if you were in a foxhole, you would have way bigger things to worry about. For example, why are you fighting in early 1900s trench warfare? <laughs> there hasn't been a foxhole since 1942. <laughs> That's what you should be concerned about, that you're a time traveler going from one archaic battle to the next, like Scott Bakula and Quantum Leap. <laughs> Reference for the older people. <laughs> Hi, man, call me old fashioned but I don't need no transgender fella hovering around while I'm pouring gunpowder into my musket. <laughs> Call me traditional, man. Call me traditional, man, but I don't need no non-binary pansexual helping me push a battering ram into the door of the castle we're storming. <laughs> Call me antiquated. But I don't need no gender non-conforming hermaphrodite helping me fight off a lion in the motherfucking Coliseum. <laughs> Call me out of this. But I don't need no trans androgynous, aromantic, pangender, gender fluid, androsexual helping me dock a Viking ship off the Northumbrian coast of England in the island of Lindisfarne to attack the Church of St. Cuthbert in the year 8793. I don't need that. That's right, you better clap. I spent 12 minutes on Wikipedia today. A lot of homework for that bit. Anyway, I did that joke recently, and after sh the show, someone came up to me, and they said there's actually been a foxhole in every war up to the last one. So that bit is not true. <laughs> but you would never know, because wrong information beats zero 
<laughs> information every time. It really does. And if there's any moral to my set, it's this. I think as you get older in life, and I really believe this, as you get older, you really got to make sure that there's no racism in your heart. Not even, not even like an ounce of racism. Not even an ounce. Because once you get dementia, that shit's coming out. <laughs> that shit's coming out. You can hide it for so long. And then you get dementia and the KKK hoodie is coming off. <laughs> dementia is just God hacking your private emails. <laughs> it's just WikiLeaks for the soul, that's all it is. I see some old people looking scared because you know it's coming. <laughs> Racism is just a fart you've been holding in for decades. <laughs> Dementia's weird too. Dementia will make you forget family members but not that you hate a group of people. <laughs> That's how deep hatred is. People with dementia are like, I hate Puerto Ricans, I hate Jews. Now who are you and where am I? <laughs> Sir, you're on a campaign stage running for president. Thank you, that's my time, you've all been great. Thank you so much. <laughs>